When you're looking to buy or upgrade your computer, one of the easiest ways to make or break your budget is on storage, especially if you're not building the computer yourself. Laptops and all in ones are the realms where it becomes especially important to optimize your storage. Let's take a look at some best practices to optimize your storage setup and ensure that you have the tools you need and that you're spending what you really need to spend. The The most important thing is to identify your use case. Are you a light user who mainly browses the web and uses office applications? Do you intend to install a lot of resource intensive games? Or maybe you're a creative professional with heavy rendering or encoding needs for creating large video files. Knowing what you're going to do with your computer is obviously the first step in determining how much storage you'll need. I think a lot of people make decisions on their system specs just in case they need it or based on habits that don't really reflect what their real use case is. Essentially the purpose of this video is to suggest that you break the habit of just in case and really factor out what you need so that you can spend your money most efficiently. Once you've figured out your use case, if you're building your own system you have to consider the classic speed versus capacity trade-off. When you're on a budget you often have to make compromises. In the world of storage that boils down to choosing between speed and capacity. High performance storage options like solid state drives are always more expensive per gigabyte compared to traditional hard drives. By contrast, hard drives are a cheaper way to get higher storage capacity. So let's look at the roles of each storage type. Internal storage is obviously more suitable for storing applications and files that require frequent and reliable access, regardless of your internet connection and without having an external hard drive plugged in. However, this is where the majority of cost comes in, especially for laptops and any system where it's integrated into the mainboard and thereby not upgradable. Manufacturers can charge an arm and a leg for storage options, and part of the reason they do it is that it's not reversible. Being so permanent to the device affects the price of refurbished devices later on once they're traded in and some configurations just have to be manufactured specifically for your order. They'll typically only pre-manufacture very common setups. External hard drives meanwhile offer portability and expandability and they can range from really well priced to really high performing. This is especially handy because you can kind of pick a slower but more reliable drive for storage backups and archiving information that isn't frequently accessed or a faster one for quick data transfer if you use a lot of large files at the same time, such as for video editing or things like that. Worth noting though, is not always great for applications and they may not yield the best performance. And especially for PCs, sometimes the assigned drive letter of your external hard drive might not remain consistent if you have other storage changes, such as adding or removing internal storage, which can mess up the configurations of applications and other things. Macs are a bit better than PCs for applications being stored on an external hard drive, but it's still not perfect so I tend to avoid applications on external drives. Finally, there's a third option to consider which I think doesn't get enough credit for its possible role in a personal storage solution, which is cloud storage. I'm sure everybody uses cloud storage, but I think it's largely ignored and kind of cluttered, and it may not be the absolute cheapest long-term option, but cloud storage does, of course, offer the convenience of accessing your documents from anywhere on any device. It's perfect for kind of storing your core documents, ensuring that they're safe and accessible across all your devices and generally it only costs a couple of dollars a month to get a reasonable amount of storage to do that, if not, nothing altogether. So let's stop rambling about the obvious basics and get down to the point of this video. Here's a strategy that I've used for years, which implements all of the options that I've mentioned, and I think it really maximizes both functionality and cost effectiveness. This can support desktops, laptops, and anything in between, though if you're a hypermobile laptop user who frequently operates away from internet or power or can't handle plugging in a, a small drive, and they do get pretty small, you might just want to opt for spending more on a, on a bunch of internal storage. But many of us rarely use our computers without the internet or the ability to sit down and plug a small hard drive in. So I'm going to work based on that assumption. Step one is to choose the smallest amount of internal storage that you can get away with. You won't be able to predict exactly the amount of, of the drive you use perfectly, but especially if you're upgrading from a previous system, take a look at the amount of data you've used on the old system, specifically for applications, the operating system, and things like that. Both macOS and Windows will categorically break down the used storage on your system. The amount of space that your operating system and applications take up should be between 50 and 75% of your new computer storage, optimally closer to 75% using my method. Aim for the lower end of 50% if you use applications that have a lot of temporarily cached files like video editors, but otherwise up to around 75% is fine. This is the storage used for my Mac, the computer I use for all my daily tasks. It's the M1 Mac Mini with the lowest storage option, just 256 gigabytes. 
With all my data, I'm only using about 140 gigabytes, and I'm pretty sure at least 35 gigabytes of that are temporary files and iMessage. Of course, a quick word for video game enthusiasts or people who need more internal storage than I do, this is where you can do a two-tier approach with a smaller solid state drive for core things and a large hard drive to store your game files. Or of course, you can go all out with massive NVMe drives, depending on the load times you can handle. But I like to point out that you can only play one game at a time, so if you have enough internet bandwidth to make installing a game here and there trivial, I like to suggest making a habit of only having a few games installed at a given time. Moving on. Step two is to store your core documents in the cloud for easily easy accessibility across devices, like I mentioned earlier. For my personal use case, I share a family plan for Microsoft 365, so I have a full terabyte on my OneDrive, though I only use a few gigabytes of that. So a free tier would work fine too. Depending on the cloud service you use, you might also want to go with a larger storage tier if you use cloud backups for your photos. So I personally see this as a bit of a trap because that can ultimately scale infinitely. Finally, step three is to invest in an external hard drive for storing backups and larger projects. Aim for something reasonably fast for future proofing. And within your budget, this is where you can put a bunch of excess storage if it makes you feel comfortable to have a lot of extra on hand. Hopefully this method of using all of the options saves your money and optimizes your computer setup. Following this approach, you can strike the right balance for you between cost effectiveness and functionality in your storage solution, which also will lower the upfront cost of that shiny new MacBook that you're eyeballing and overall live a cleaner and more comfortable digital life.